So our bodies are pretty picky. They know their set point and what they are, what they want to be able to function and be comfortable. And acid-base balance is no exception. The body has a very specific pH level that it likes to be. And anything outside of that can cause a lot of calamity in the body. So today we're gonna to be talking about acid-base balance, how to identify it and what to do about it. Go ahead and grab both your Giddens and your Davis text today. And you'll also need version B of your concept study guide. Here's a list of the objectives that we're going to accomplish today in our lecture. You can pause here if you want to read these out or write them down for yourself. So let's go ahead and get into it by just defining this concept. What is it? And kind of describing what this concept means. So acid-base balance is really about the balance of the regulating the pH, the acidity of body fluids. And there's two kind of key players in this. There's carbon dioxide, which is an acid, and bicarbonate, which is a base or an alkaline. And these two components really play into helping us regulate the pH of our body fluids. So when we're talking about key terms, acid is produced by through through the processes of cellular metabolism. And so we have extra acid that grows and is produced by our bodies and we need to be able to do something about it. So acid production is one key term. Acid excretion is the removal of that extra acid from the body. And acid buffering is when there are processes in place where the body kicks in other uh, components to neutralize the pH in the body with things called buffers. Now, in terms of scope of this concept, we want to remember some kind of main uh, numbers here for acid base. And the first one you need to know, and it's very important, is what is the normal pH for the body? Well, the normal pH for the blood is 7.35 to 7.45. And so our optimal pH acid base balance right in the middle, because we don't want to teeter totter, right? Is that optimal pH of 7.35 to 7.45. Anything less than 7.35 is considered acidic and anything greater than 7.45 is considered alkalotic or alkaline. Not only is the pH going to be normalized at 7.35 to 7.45, but the carbon dioxide and the bicarbonate are also going to have normal levels. And we'll get into those ranges in a minute. So acid-base balance is, is considered the norm. That's what we would expect in a well individual. And it's really required by our body for normal physiologic functioning. And it indicates homeostasis. Remember, our body has the set point. It's very comfortable in terms of temperature and acid base and all of these different ways that the body is comfortable. Acid-base balance is no exception to that. Now an acid-base imbalance uh, can develop as a complication from another underlying condition. An, an acid-base imbalance is never considered normal, but you might expect an imbalance if there's certain specific chronic conditions uh, present. So let's talk about the production and excretion of acid in our body. So cellular metabolism produces acids, and then these acids have to go somewhere to be excreted. And they're excreted in two different ways. Um, we excrete them through carbon dioxide, through breathing out carbon dioxide in the lungs. And we can excrete it as hydrogen ions excreted through the kidneys. So metabolic acids go through the kidneys for excretion, or carbonic acids go through the lungs for excretion. So really the two key players in terms of organs when we're talking about acid is the lungs and the kidneys. So when we're talking about the lungs, we're talking about the respiratory system and its involvement in excretion of acid or retention of acid. And we're measuring this by the arterial carbon dioxide level, the PaCO2, uh, which is considered an acid. Um, and then in terms of the kidneys, we're talking about metabolic uh, function and the retention of bicarbonate, which we would measure by arterial bicarb levels, HCO3. And so the goal is similar to our fluid volume status. What goes in must come out. So we need to have equal amounts of acid excretion to keep pace with the acid production. And when that happens, the buffer systems in our bodies are not overwhelmed and we're able to maintain a normal pH of 7.35 to 7.45. 
Now acidosis occurs when that serum, that blood level pH is below 7.35. And it can be caused by a few things. We either have too much acid that we're holding on to, or we're releasing too much base. And either way, we've got a teeter-totter effect. And so we can have a respiratory acidosis where we're main, re, re, retaining carbon dioxide. We're not blowing off of enough carbon dioxide. We're keeping that CO2 in the body, increasing our acid. Or we can have a metabolic acidosis where we're getting rid of too much bi bicarb and bicarb is an alkaline, it's a base. And so if we're getting rid of too much bicarb, then we have too much acid by default because we don't have enough bicarb to keep up. So again, we're talking about that teeter-totter effect where our excretion of acid and our formation of acid are not matching up. Now alkalosis on the other side is when we have too much base and our serum pH goes above 7.45. And again, we're gonna have a teeter-totter effect, but for a different reason. We either are retaining too much base or we're losing too much acid. So respiratory acidosis, we're blowing off that CO2 or getting rid of too much of that carbon dioxide or a metabolic acidosis, we have this increase in bicarbonate. We're not getting rid of enough of that bicarbonate, we're retaining too much of it. And so we have too much alkaline in our body. So here's a chart from your Giddens text that really shows these different kinds of acid base imbalances that we can have. We can have acidosis where our pH is too acidic, less than 7.35, or we can have an alkalosis where the pH is greater than 7.45. And either way, they can be caused by um, the respiratory system by the lungs, either retaining or getting rid of too much carbon dioxide, or it can happen from the kidneys, either retaining or getting rid of too much bicarbonate, that base. Now we have this compensatory responses to this acid base imbalance. Remember that either the lungs or the kidneys are the primary driver or per, uh, organ involved in this acid base imbalance. But, and the other organ doesn't really want to get involved. So the kid, but the kidneys and lungs can temporarily compensate for the change in pH. In other words, when the lungs are doing something funky, the kidneys are like, you know what, just leave me out of it. I'm just going to keep doing my thing. I'm going to keep excreting a, uh, bicarb the way I'm supposed to, and I'm just going to stay out of it. Don't drag me into this. I'm minding my own business. Okay. But then the lungs can do the same thing. Uh, kidneys, I don't know what you're doing down there, but you know, you're off base, but I'm just going to keep doing my thing and breathing off my CO2 and maintaining that. But after a while, the other system gets involved and like, I don't know what you're doing kidneys, but like, I'm going to start taking over because you're not doing your job. And so the other system can respond and buffer uh, whatever the metabolic system's doing or whatever the respiratory system into is doing. And they can compensate for this acid base imbalance. And these compensations can be fully compensated where the pH level goes back to normal because the other system kicked in and helped out. It can be partially compensated where you still have some acidosis or some alkalosis, but it's a lot better than when the other system hadn't kicked in at all. Or you can have an uncompensated uh, respiratory or metabolic acidosis or alkalosis where the other system is not getting involved. They are minding their own business. They are not trying to compensate for the system that's out of whack. Now this really only happens when the primary system is overwhelmed. And when we have an alteration in our acid base balance, it affects our bodies both on the cellular and on the organ level. And specifically what we're going to see is things like altered mental status, loss of consciousness uh, and heart dysrhythmias because at the cellular and organ level, we need that acid base balance in order to function. So acid-base balance or imbalance rather is something that needs to be addressed quickly and regulated so that we aren't seeing these neurologic and cardiac consequences. Now there are certainly specific risk factors for disorders that can cause acid-base balance imbalances and we're going to want to be alerted to those as red flags that our patients may be at risk for acid-base imbalance. And so there's really, uh, the risk factors are going to be related directly to the causes of acid base imbalance. So anytime there's any imbalance in acid production or excretion, 
um, either from a respiratory cause or a metabolic cause, we're going to have CR patients at risk for acid-base imbalance. As usual, the very young and the very old are most at risk for imbalances. The very young because they have immature lungs and metabolic processes. And the very old because their kidneys don't always work as well as they did when they were younger. And they lack the ability to correct and compensate for those imbalances. So in order to know when an individual has an acid-base imbalance, we have to be able to understand how to interpret an, an arterial blood gas. But that is gonna be for part two of our lecture. So I'll see you back here for part two.